figure it out between the two, okay. and then we'll just do it over in post. All right, cool. Let's make this happen, guys. I've got a tour coming through at Anathate. Hey, this is episode seven of Ask the Doc. Today, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of great stuff. Noah is here with me. We're in his greenhouse today, so he gets to call all the shots. our greenhouse. Listen to him being all inclusive. This is going to be a lightning round, um, ask the doctor. So we're going to try and get through this as fast as possible, you know, for the modern attention span here. <laughs> um, so let's just get started. Is that good? Yep. First question. What criteria do you use to decide whether or not to use grow lights in a greenhouse or a high tunnel? So um, totally dependent on crops, right? And totally dependent on markets. So certain crops need a certain amount of daylight and um, of course certain markets want really consistent supply so almost anything you're growing if you're in the northern u.s if you're in canada you're at you're a rather northern latitude you know that um, you'll probably have to supplement lighting if you want everything to stay nice and even across your entire season so if they want 10 pounds a week if all of your customers want so many pounds a week same in the summer as in the winter same in the winter as in the summer then you'll probably have to supplement lighting so that's a market question and it's also a crop question. Things like basil, less than 12 hours a day, it will not grow. I mean, it will be there, it will be alive, but it will not grow. Mm -hmm. So you just have to know your crop and know your market, and that can usually help you make the decision. And then it's just energy costs, it's all in Excel after that. So, number two. I totally hog the answer on that. That's fine. I had an issue with sick fish yesterday, last year, my first season. I'm getting ready to clean my system. Spring is approaching in New Jersey. My question is, what is a safe and effective way to clean my fish tank? This is from Reed. Slash pond. Is it a pond? My like guess is a lined tank. Okay. So, a, or a pond with a liner. So, I mean, as far as cleaning it out, I guess it depends on whether it's drained or not. Um, if you have sick fish and you're pretty sure it's like fish disease and not just like horrible fish stress that causes a background disease to bump up, which is what it is most of the time, then cleaning your tanks might help. But I'll be honest with you, most of the time when people have sick fish, it's because it's it's poor management. It's not necessarily, be, the disease will always be there, right? It's almost impossible to get rid of these diseases. Every time you bring in fish, you bring in diseases, but um, you know, the big thing is, is uh, how are you managing the system? If your fish are stressed, they're gonna get disease. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how clean, how sterile everything is, it's messy stuff. Yeah, I mean. If it's empty, you can just go through and bleach it, right? Just go through with steam clean or bleach it, something like that. Make sure you wash everything out. Um, some people use hydrogen peroxide because it's not, you know, you don't have to rinse it as well. There are a lot of options out there, but I'll tell you right now, it's probably a management issue. It's not necessarily a my tanks are dirty issue. So the system is designed wrong, or you're probably stressing the fish out in some way, shape, or form. That's not a happy answer. Sorry. <laughs> No unicorns I'm just or rainbows not say today. Anything throughout. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Nate. This one's for me. I had a question about your greenhouse and snow. I'm from no, Calgary. No, we missed one. No, that no. one's X'd out. No, no, number three, four is X'd out. Oh. This is. <laughs> He's so right. I'll let you answer this as a reward. Does Bright Africa <laughs> no practice a seed harvesting program or purchase all their seed? Uh, we purchased all of our seed right now from Baker Creek Seed, which is fantastic. I just got all of our seed yesterday, and I... No, point to a link, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's, know what point to a link That is not going to look natural at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're supposed to point to a Baker link. Creek Seed right here, uh, they're great. They're a great company, but um, eventually I want to start growing out. I mean, I seed out some peppers. But that's really the only the only thing I see out. Yeah, we've, we've saved seed on occasion. Yeah, um, marigolds. We we save all the marigolds we grow. It depends on the crop and how easy. Some crops are really a pain to save seed on. Mm -hmm. I mean, some crops are just not worth it. Um, but by and large, you know, uh, anymore, I think all we all we get our seed from is Baker Creek anymore. Mm -hmm. We used to buy from Harris and Johnny's and and a few other companies, and they've got good stuff. But we do a lot of heirloom stuff now, and and. Baker Creek is the place to go. Oh yeah, they just, they have such variety and every year they're just crazy. If you, are a, if you are a plantophile, if you just get excited about <laughs> having the opportunity to play with something that no one's really gotten a chance to play with before or hasn't played with for a hundred years, it's fun to get heirloom stuff from Baker Creek. Yeah. Some of it is like 
some weird Siberian tomato. Or, Could you explain you know? real fast just like what heirloom seeds are? Yeah, so I mean heirloom seeds are just like really old variety seeds. They're typically non-hybridized and they are um, fairly pure. So they've been, uh, their location, they've been uh, specific to a certain population of people, a certain uh, area of the world and a certain use for a really long time. And they've just been like bred in these incredible, like totally natural Darwinian breeding programs. Uh, with some intentionality and you get these crazy awesome seeds some of them are just super hardy some of them are super cold tolerant some of them are uniquely adapted to certain conditions and they're just i mean it's like um i don't know if you love plants you can't help but love heirloom yeah. seed because a lot of it is just really really neat that's not knocking modern hybrids because modern hybrids are great too but modern hybrids don't breed true so with a lot of these heirloom seeds you can take plants and if they're separate from other things and you know you can breed true mm -hmm. and you can get offspring that are very similar to the mm -hmm. to the adults yeah. cool. we started with deer tongue lettuce and we've probably got some around here somewhere yeah, right there. but um you know we were kind of surprised it grew incredibly well in towers and in our systems and it had a really good flavor really unique appearance i don't know it's just just it's been a lot of fun yeah, yeah it's cool. fun Okay, hey, shut up. Time to in the vortex. <laughs> Lightning okay. round. All right, go, all right. Go, go. Okay. Hi, Dr. Story. I had a question about your greenhouse and snow. I'm from Calgary, Alberta. My family has a farm in Delia, Alberta, and we seem to have similar climates. Yeah, we probably do. How does the plastic hold up on the cold, and how well does it deal with weight if a blizzard rolls in and decides to drop 40 centimeters overnight? I've got to do all of my metric to imperial conversions now. Okay. <laughs> 2.54. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. We're talking like 16, 17 inches of snow. So in our experience, um, the plastic holds up actually really well to the cold. I will be perfectly honest. It all comes with like a four year warranty. We're using six mil poly with infrared coatings, mm -hmm. anti-condensate coatings. Um, it will not probably, especially if you're super windy, it's not going to hold up for four years or six years. Like yeah. a lot of them say. Yeah. It's most likely going to be like a three year product. And the reason for that is just in the wind, and especially when it's super cold and windy, it just, you know, it's so abrasive, and that plastic is just working back and forth in the heat of the summer, and then, you know, when it's 40 degrees below zero, yeah. um, it just, it's, you know, that takes a toll on plastic. We're not dealing with normal growing conditions. So plan on replacing it, say, every three years instead of every four. Work that into your financials, and that'll give you your answer. But besides that, it works great. The biggie is you have to keep it heated during the winter. So if it's gonna be if it's gonna be snowing a lot, keep it heated and keep your tunnel size, you know, somewhat manageable because if you keep it heated, all that snow will melt and it will just continually slide off your your high tunnel. If it accumulates, yeah, you've got a problem yeah. with 15 inches, 16 inches. But if you um, are heating your high tunnel, it just kind of forms a little water layer there, it melts and then the entire chunk just slides off. And so you'll never actually have accumulation so long as you stay nice and warm. Yeah. You'll have big piles of snow down at the base. Of, oh, you might have to move some of those. That's the biggie. Yeah. I mean, just keep it warm. Yeah. Anything to add? Cool. Number six. I started aquaponics three years ago this past March. Each winter I struggle with mildew and mold. What to do, what to do. This is from Kelly. Kelly, we feel your pain. Mm -hmm. We're actually just talking about how we're relatively um, powdery mildew free right now in here. Powdery mildew, yeah. especially in the winter, because powdery mildew loves shade, right? Mm -hmm. It loves shade, it loves some humidity, it loves cooler temperatures. And so winter conditions in most people's greenhouses are perfect for powdery mildew. So um, ventilation is key, dropping your humidity, um, and of course minimizing the amount of shade. You know, getting lots of light on your plants will help. But at the end of the day, you know, running a little bit higher potassium in your system seems to help. Um, a lot of people swear by things like silicone additions, mm. but I will tell you right now, you will probably have to spray during the winter to get rid of your powdery mildew if you have a greenhouse, anything like ours. So we use Actinovate and we use Serenade. Those are the two biggies. And then of course, people will use uh, like carbonate base uh, and uh, fungicides. And that actually, ch it changes the pH of the leaf surface and it makes it harder for uh, the, the fungus to infect the leaf. Yeah. So those are the big ways to control it. Well, active management too. Active Go, management. Going through and picking off every. Tearing out the highly infected yeah. stuff before you know forms spores and blows mm -hmm. all over your greenhouse. These are all important uh, ways to kind of take care of it. So um, Actinovate and Serenade. Serenade. We love Serenade. Serenade is actually I like Serenade a little better yeah. personally. 
Neem's pretty good. They're both, Serenade and Actinovate are, are both or OMRI, you know, products. Neem will work fairly well as well, as well as some other oils. Okay, bam, that's it. We're so fast. All right, so next week we are going to be talking about RO filters. We're going to talk about RO filters in detail, the nitty gritty of RO filters. So send us your questions regarding water quality and RO filters, and we will do our best to answer those next week. So you guys can submit those questions through the form, and there's a link below for that. Um, also, you know, don't forget to just send, them, send us in whatever questions you have. And, uh, you know, we'll do our best to, to answer those. Don't forget, we also have a lot of good blog posts recently, so check out the blog. Again, link below. And, um, yeah. So, one final note, the green wall is up for pre-order now, so if you guys have been sitting on the fence for a while waiting for the green wall uh, 2.0 to come online, it is currently online. So, we have ordered the inventory, we are in the process of setting up the supply chain, and all of the assembly, and all the stuff that goes with that. So, go check out the green wall today. If you've been waiting, now's the time to order.